Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello and welcome to another Nintendo podcast. I am your host, Austin Cummings, and today I am joined as ever by Matthew Schultz. Hello. Hey, Matt. And Danny Tortelli. Hey there. Hi there, you. How are you? Doing great. How are you both? We're happy. We're still here. We're still a podcast. Mm-hmm. Against all odds. A lot of people say, why do you do it? You know, why are you recording? You're well over a year into AMP now. What gets you out of bed every two weeks to record this show? <laughs> I say we do it for the fan. So King D, D Daniel, the Danny, thank you, sir. As ever, you've inspired us to continue to record, to create, and to be our both our best and our worst selves. Um, but today we have a really exciting topic, which comes from Bloomberg report uh, that was released just a couple days ago that was citing sources regarding the next Switch console. Would either of yes. you, provided, provided that you have the link pulled up and ready, want to read us that headline? All right, well, the headline specifically is technology from Bloomberg. Nintendo plans on uh, upgraded Switch console and major games for 2021. Uh, it goes on to say that uh, Nintendo plans to debut an upgraded model of its Switch console next year, along with a lineup of new games. People familiar with the uh, particular matter said this. Uh, seeing 2020's holiday spotlight to rival devices uh, from Sony and Microsoft, um, you know, which first, first and foremost, as... Uh, like the first paragraph of this article makes me think, oh, what do you, what do you mean they're seeding the holiday? Like, are they not going to have a big game? Mm-hmm, Which mm-hmm. I think we'll get into in a second. Oh, we will get into it, Matt. We're gonna, we're it's gonna be going on for so long our convo on that that a hundred percent of our viewers <laughs> will bow out. But I'm excited to talk about that very point. But continue. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Like and subscribe. I, I really wish our fans were like the toads you find in mm. Paper Mario, where you can, you know, we just wish they were everywhere and we could yeah. just continue to find them. And <laughs> Even 10 of them. Just, I feel like, yeah, or, and then when you like hit them with your hammer or just like, I guess, pull them up out of the ground, they'd be like, I was content not listening to AP and now I have yeah. to listen to it. <laughs> and they wall, waddle off. I love it when they're now like, I'm all like, bent I was out a grasshopper and I was happy. Walls. <laughs> <laughs> Hops off, yeah. Um, Anyway, so it, it does go on to say that the, it says Kyoto, the Kyoto-based company has looked into including more computing power and potentially 4K high-definition graphics. People mm-hmm. briefed uh, on the strategy told Bloomberg News, asking not to be identified because it's private. Nintendo faces uh, stiff competition for gamers' attention this fall from PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X. D- Danny, would um, you like to announce at this time that you are actually the person who briefed Bloomberg News um, yeah. and had previously said to be private? It's me. I'm the insider. They give me all the news. <laughs> I give it to them. That's very sweet. Are. You find the hottest takes deep into the Nintendo subreddit, and you just you just forward those on to Bloomberg. Jason Schreier over there. <laughs> Smoking. <laughs> Smoking hot stuff. You guys, I got it. Goku <laughs> confirm for Smash. Um, now, don't but yeah, like, so that's, that's exciting. It's really exciting. You know, I think um, kind of some other highlights from this article that we'll put in the show notes, but it's that the in in light of this pandemic that Nintendo stock has actually uh, really spiked so more than 70% uh, it, of its share price since uh, specifically Animal Crossing New Horizons launch back in March which we know we've talked about quite a bit on the show Matt we hosted some podcasts in your uh, home which was really the first of its kind that that had been done but we're happy that other people in the greater community have adopted that idea um, <laughs> and the Gary Widow, so you know, nothing. There's, nothing a, there's a lot. <laughs> Who dis? There's a lot of really attention on the Switch, and it's selling so well. Still, uh, Wario64, who's great on Twitter for all those deals, you know, tweets out, hey, Nintendo Switch in stock, and then yeah. you know, your mileage may vary, or it's out of stock now. And it's still hard to walk into a store and buy a Switch. So from Nintendo's standpoint, it makes sense. They're not trying to necessarily rush this or come out with like a big announcement that would make people want to hold off and wait for the next iteration but this is exciting nonetheless specifically because of the playstation 5 and xbox series x which we know will likely still launch a holiday of this year 2020 uh, unless the giant meteor does hopefully take us all out so um 
But from both of from both of you guys, what were your kind of initial reactions to seeing this report when uh, this report came out? Just to to date it was August twenty fourth. Uh, I mean, yay! Uh, mm-hmm. I'm excited. I've been wanting new Switch hardware for a while. Um, you know the the slight refresh from last year, cool and all. Switch Lite. I know you guys got a lo- lot more mileage out of it than I did, um, mm-hmm. and quite a few people have uh, to this date still too. Um, but I'm excited for, even if it's not a full new generation, just some kind of some kind of upgrade, some kind yeah, a little of refresh, reimagining, refresh. Um, even if it's the same OS, even if it's still the same, you know, um, we're not switching whole generations. This is just like a half generation up. Uh, yeah, no, I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Matt, your thoughts? Yeah, I'm. I'm pumped for this. This is, uh, you know, something we've all wanted. I, and I think that just the switch design is getting a little long in the tooth, you know, and uh, like more and more as you've got rumors of new iPads and the new iPhones and all yeah. the, all the, all the tech that's been coming over the past, uh, several months or uh, it's recently been delayed, but it's, you know, now showing up. I'll like pick up and look at my switch and still a fantastic console, but just aesthetically, it does feel like a solid toy, but like an old toy. Yeah, um, big old bezels. Yeah. Big bezels huge, on that screen. You know, the joy con obviously bezels. plagued by the drift scenarios. Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah, it does, is, it does feel like we're kind of getting ready. I think the, the biggest revelation, uh, or, you know, there's something that I, I think I think about frequently, but it really had driven home is there have been a lot of great sales on the Switch as of late. And I was enjoying playing some games such as the Crisis Remaster came out first on yeah. Switch, which was really fun and uh, neat to see it on there. And though it was impressive, the Switch can run it. It's still experiences like that. I was playing Burnout Paradise as well, which is a, a 360 and PS3 generation game. But even that, like draw distance wise and whatnot, when I played on a big screen, are more obviously limited. I love the Switch for portable play, but I, you can see areas where it's like, oh, this is just not delivering on a performance level that I wish maybe it were um, for the, like, the bigger experiences, particularly the third-party ones. Now, we don't know for this report to dial back. It does say perhaps 4K compatibility. We don't know if that is, you know, is the display going to support a 4K resolution on handheld? Right now, it's just a 720p display. We know if uh, for those of you that have current generation iPhones, you know, those have 4K displays as far as pixel density. Uh, Mm -hmm. So could we see something more in line with that? That would be exciting. Or is it going to be a matter of the way that the new hardware just boosts itself to have some type of 4K compatibility when it's talked? Um, You know, we just don't know the answer. If is this going to be an improvement in terms of, hey, the hardware of the switch is upgraded, um, but less so like the the core guts, like something that's refreshed closer. Again, I know Danny, you and I had talked a little about this, something like the Xbox one to the Xbox one S, you know, something that was, there were some under the hood improvements, but largely it was aesthetics and, uh, you know, the, it could play HDR and things in HDR. So we don't know the answers to this, but let's start off with a little, a little game. It's kind of a downer clown revisited. Um, but this time, we're going to talk about a couple different specifics from this supposed launch and just kind of put an A and P, you know, stake, stake in the moon, but again, you know, put that flag in the moon, see that flag blowing in the breeze. And let's just <laughs> um, kind of lay our claim as to what we think is going to happen when this thing launches. First of all, the name Nintendo has a pretty tricky uh, track record with making clearly titled sequel consoles. Now we know this is sounds like more of an iteration, less of a true sequel. That said, the Switch will be approaching four years, which is impressive, especially when we consider the Wii U only lasted from 2012 to 2017. And even saying it lasted that long is a, a generous claim. It, you know, it limped oh, its way to the finish it, line there. <laughs> it was a, a hobble hey, for the it, ages. It, right. It still lives on in a box somewhere. In my yeah, exactly. And you can play the whole Wii U library now for fifty nine ninety nine a piece on the Nintendo Switch. But um, <laughs> as far as the name, let's start with that. So do you guys think it'll have some cr- this crazy Nintendo name, something along the lines of a new 3DS or you know, new 2DS <laughs> XL, things, right. something that is not clearly... Um, you know, a hardware iteration, DSi, you know, things like that that are kind of half steps, or will it have something that is more obvious, like a Switch Pro or a Switch 
S sounds kind of awkward with the two, like that S alliteration I don't care for, but something along those lines, which X, I don't, you know. Like what, what we know, what we know so far, they've gone with, they've never gone with a pro moniker, right? They've, they've gone with XL, the, yeah, that's the true. I, the like this and in so those is, cases they were very specific like xl was larger you know i had the camera yeah. Yeah, um so this is the dsi and so always that's that's been their mo switch like, 4k okay, name it right <laughs> it, it could yeah it could switch be. fork yep um <laughs> that's good i i i've been thinking about this and i kind of wonder if like would they adjust the joy cons to have maybe a proper d-pad and then could they call it the like switch plus you know, but the logo has mm, the little pad. Okay, logo. okay, he's done it. Done. Hot yeah, I would dropped. say and the podcast now. I would Let's say that would fall that. more into the line of like the safe name, like something that does. Yeah, I think the consumer knows, like, oh well, Switch Plus is clearly superior to the Switch in the it's, same way that people are trained with the, you know, the Plus for like the Seven Plus versus the Seven as far as like the yeah. iPhone. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, Danny, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I was going to say, oh, it's going to be the new Switch or mm-hmm. your Pro. I would love something to be called the Pro, but I feel like with that name, I'm fully expecting Switch 2.0, like the full leap to the next generation. Not something this more significant. Iterative. Um, so I actually think I didn't even think about Plus. Matt said it. And now I'm like, oh, whatever ideas I had, I, I like Plus now. We know Nintendo's used a lot of Deluxe for their Wii U games that have come back, so that's been something we've seen <laughs> in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. Um, I mean, we know that they, they like the model, of the, the Apple model a little bit, and they tried to adopt Max that with the 3DS. Pro. Uh, I'm, well, I'm thinking just like 2, Switch 2, you know? Like, but I think that'll be the legitimate 12. Switch 2. I think the next like full yeah, step will be Switch 2. But uh, so so w- then we all pretty much agree that like we think this is just a uh, new 2ds yeah. like yeah because there was that version rep- of the switch because there was that report earlier this calendar year right where they had the financial call the investors call and the president of Nintendo said um, we see this as entering the halfway point of its life cycle right so that's what makes me think this is more just. Yeah, the and of course we had the iterative. launching rumor of both a light model and a pro model. We got the light model, but never the pro. You know, we wondered if yeah. the upgraded battery on the initial was the pro, but they had seemingly signaled that it wasn't. So, yeah, I think it's a half step. But see, that's the thing is, so even even iPhones, right? Like even like phone upgrades, it's still it's for the most part it's the same phone with a, a little faster chip or better whatever. Like there's better specs, but it's the same experience. And I think. Like, I think say they could still go with that name if they want and still have it be like. You oh, know, you mean like pro? If, if no, 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 two, like two, like switch yeah. two, right? Mm-hmm. If they go with something like that, that's flagging a couple of things. One, they like they like this model and they're going to try to kind of continue to reiterate. But two, that like the switch is something they're going to like try to reiterate on for a longer period of mm-hmm. time than just like a halfway through the life. Like it's I don't definitely yeah. None of us want Nintendo right now to like to be like let's just okay that was a fun generation let's see what we can create next. Switch like, you, no, you no, baby. No, like, no, 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 like, no. like you you know don't let your competitors eat your lunch on this and because you know a lot of I mean no like sidebar right the the Surface uh, Duo just came out from Microsoft and and though it's a proof of concept device. That thing is a pretty well-made handheld, which could very much run an Xbox uh, cloud, you know, service. Oh, Game in the Pass, future. yeah, right. And and if that's the like, I, I don't know. That's why that's kind of like it probably does I'm now. Like, I mean, it probably yeah, I was does say, run the future. I think the reviewers are probably going to show us in the next couple of weeks that it does run. Yeah, but I'm I'm sure I mean, especially down the road when they when they can, you know, when when they can make that a much more consumer friendly device, like. Like, oh, man, like you just hope Nintendo is still playing ball with this model, uh, you know, and you're hoping and they're playing Rusty's real deal baseball <laughs> specifically. Where hey, that was gonna an amazing game. Your um, <laughs> I do think oh, this man. might be called Switch colon Rusty's real deal, too. <laughs> but I do think I think you're uh, you make a good point, Matt. I wonder, you know, if Nintendo did that, that would be exciting because I think it would show, like you said, commitment to this this brand and this concept. But so far in the video game space, typically 
taking that leap numerically denotes a lack of backwards compatibility for the previous generation, right? The or at least moving forward. So like the PS2, you know, the PS1 will not play PS2 games like the and yeah. it just kind of continues on the, the some of those had backwards compatibility and the I think that would be the concern. People would be like, oh, is this a Switch 2 game or a Switch game? Whereas I think there would probably be fewer just because this is the way we've been trained. That said, though, they have always echoed Apple's design philosophies. And so that would be neat to see that. You almost wonder, though, if we got a Switch 2 in 2021, does that mean there'd be something named Switch 3 in 2022 and it would become more like Apple, you know, and then just kind of like, oh, in the same way with an iPhone, you know, these eventually it's like, well, these games are only going to run on, you know, iPhone six and newer kind of thing and that right. will be that would be confusing and i i don't as long have as enough it's running that nintendo sweet to nintendo us os that. what was that yeah so as, as long as it's running that sweet nintendo operating system oh yeah <laughs> super that well simple. loved mm-hmm. super stable <laughs> beyond the stable. other things yeah as long as you don't open oh, the eShop, it runs well. very well <laughs> <laughs> the um okay so i, I like the switch plus naming I think I'm hoping Nintendo being a little smarter will do something like plus and not something that's more abstract. Do you guys see there being exclusive games, assuming this is iterative uh, or like I, a big presence of exclusive games? I feel like maybe not. It, you mean to this versus the light yeah. in the original? My guess is not because they wouldn't want to split the market. Yeah. But it, well, as far as first party, no, I do think more maybe third party developers with the intent of, oh, this newer model, we can actually not, like, completely roll our game back to make it passable yeah. on this platform. That's an interesting point, Denny, because yeah. the, you know, the 3DS, of course, had the new version, which played Xenoblade Chronicles, most notably. Um, but that, you know, that console wasn't receiving a ton, a ton of third party, especially things that, like, it wasn't getting, you know, 3DS wasn't going to get a port of a playstation 3 game right that just wasn't how that worked whereas the switch will get ports and i'm sure nintendo would like to continue to get third-party ports well into this next generation of console so yeah you do wonder are there going to be third parties that are going to say only on switch plus it, yeah maybe i mean we've seen like with black ops cold war being announced um as well as like assassin's creed there's definitely an emphasis on the other consoles to have this kind of cross-gen compatibility at least for a while so I think Nintendo will still be comfortable enough for some time, but you do, you know, maybe a year before things start being like, okay, there's only a PS5 version. There's not going to be a PS4 version as well of this game, you know? Um, but yeah, that's an interesting point about third party. I think for first party though, I got to think it'll be really just like, hey, if you are passionate about the Switch, this is like a more premium kind of experience. Maybe, and it's going to things maybe will run more smoothly or battery life might be better and the display will be better maybe on the you know output and also the screen. But this raises the next question. Do you guys think there'll be a price increase for this more powerful version of the Switch? That's that's really interesting because I, I already think that the Switch, the current Switch should be priced lower than it is. Um, but you I, have the 199 option in the Switch Lite, I feel like, is the bailout for the Switch. Like if you're a parent... Yeah. You know, and you're like, well, I don't you know, really want my kid taking up the screen space anyway on the TV. So the Switch Lite makes sense at 199. I think they will retire the current Switch, and this would just become the default. But then that would also make me think this is not going to be a huge oh. leap. You know, I would. Is... Yeah, you know, I was gonna say I would hope not if they just did the modest refresh last year for like just do that for two years and then completely cut that line entirely. Well, what did they do for? What did they do for new the new 3ds? When, when the, um, yeah, they came out with that beat up version, but there was the 2DS continued to come out, so you still had the like the right. you know doorstop shaped, um, 2DS, like that would have different bundles at like Black Friday, where it was like, hey, it's a hundred bucks and has Mario Kart 7. Uh, I or, think, I think you know, that you, did you say keep it then because I think they're gonna keep it. I think I, the switch light would stay, but I think that it would probably still stay at 299. I, I think, I, have to think, I think it's a $300 you know. system and it's, yeah. and it's. It, they painted in their family of systems, right? Like your switch is the entry level switch lights, the entry level switch is if you want the actual switching capacity. And then if you like really want to play the next Zelda, you know, and the best of the best, yeah, like at a 4k, then you get, you know, you get the switch pro. Um, but you think, okay. So you think then it's going to be like a 399 system and the other two are going to live. Uh, Maybe three forty nine. I, I don't know three. Yeah, I can't see Nintendo selling a, a console for four hundred dollars. So 
I was saying because you know the thing that Nintendo has to consider is like you know Nintendo they pay for shelf space at a Target or Walmart or whatever yeah. and they're they're not gonna want to stock three different versions of Switch especially if you know come spring or what have you of 2021 if people are just going to get the Switch Plus. Um, which makes me think they're going to more likely to retire. Yeah. I think the red box. The other question is what do these new consoles come in at? And if, you know, let's say the PS five and the Xbox series S, which is rumored to be the cheaper one, let's say they both come out at about $500. Then I think there is more room there for a 350 switch. Um, But I think if, if like the Xbox Series S comes at four hundred dollars, which I think is also pretty likely, they I heard it's like well, fifty dollars in the Series S is probably gonna be a lot more powerful. Yeah, they. Than, they I mean, obviously they they they've been running the numbers on this for a while, and they're probably thinking like, you know, should we is a hundred dollars enough to differentiate our like our like would pricing a better more powerful Switch, which has the name recognition now, help us? Um, but pricing that up help us actually push more people and more sales to the light. You know, how is, you know, is that like, can those two play together nicely? But to like a $200 difference between those consoles, I, I just can't see that. So let's say yeah. 350 for Switch Plus. Um, Not as a max. And you're guessing that the other ones live. At least I, I do for a while because, like you said, like with the 3DS and the 2DS, and you could you could there's so there's so many options. They all played the same games. Um, some mm-hmm. played them. Some loaded your stuff faster. Um, right. I, I don't know. It just I guess it really depends on what what the, what is this switch really meant to be? If it's meant to be iterative, iterative, then what mm-hmm. like what's the benefit? For, like for example, why would you two buy it? Like what what are the things you would buy it for? The better better Joy-Con, maybe has Bluetooth, headphone connectivity, and a better screen. And then like I mean, thing number one is because it's new and it will likely say <laughs> Nintendo on the box. And so it's yeah, yeah, pre order yeah. now. Um, yeah, but so. like Danny, you were like oh, like listen off your fingers as I was, you know, saying those things. So like all of those things you'd be like, Okay, yeah, take my money, I want those on a switch. Yeah, because I'm like I, I would like trimmer bezels you know 1080 handheld um i would like it to run a little quicker and maybe For just sure. in game a little less frame rate issues For um sure. yeah stability or, you know, biggest lag thing. Or, yeah, yeah the 4k I thing love a really stable nintendo yeah i think matters so little especially you know a lot of people don't have 4k displays um and it's just like but yet the stability is definitely the biggest sacrifice you make like especially there's you know there are occasionally like uh, Blood Roots is a, an indie game I enjoyed playing on Switch this year, and it's kind of a Hotline Miami, but cartoonish, like hyper violent game where you're this yeah. person in like early colonial America kind of thing. And so, um, but it it like stuttered and chugged more frequently than I'd like on the Switch. I got through it, but I was the whole time I was like, ah, oh, watching these like great clips of people playing on PS4, being like, nah, it would have been so much smoother. Yeah. And you know that's an indie uh, title, and you you know those are the things when i'm playing these games i mentioned that i got on sale which like this is fun but you know all the times when i'm sitting he- sitting here and this thing is loading or what have you or uh stuttering and i'm like uh you know what am i sacrificing especially when i played on the on the big screen because then it is really a one to one comparison with the experience i could have on just a ps4 right now not yeah. even considering the next gen consoles so see this is why this is why i think that there isn't going to be a name and it, it's going to be switch or it's going to be a new switch because they don't want, they're not going to want to, if, if they're going to phase out the old switch, they're not going to want to switch plus and then a switch light, like where then what's, what's in the middle of that. Right. Like if that's gone, mm-hmm. I think it's just going to be the like freaking new, new switch, which oh, no, is no, marketing. Matt, I liked it better when you said plus. I mean, I did too. Matt, but, no, go, I'm Danny, but, kick it from the call. Kick him from the call. But if 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 they are if they're gonna move away from the next switch or they're from their current switch model, it, it doesn't mean it doesn't make sense. Like, okay, you have a plus and a light, but like, so I have to pay either more or less. But like, what I wanted that thing that my like my kids' friend. That's why had. I think it'll just replace the skew and it'll kill off the two nights. So what? Then the real question is: the box turned red this last time. What mm-hmm. color does the box turn? For Do you think we can get a deeper red out of these guys? I think uh, maybe, maybe maroon. Is that, how's that okay. look on Nintendo? 
Oh. Bad. For Wario and Waluigi, we can go purple. There we go. Yeah, we love them. They're really the ones to usher us into the next era of gaming. The uh, Okay, so we're a little <laughs> divided on this one. We feel good about Switch Plus, and I think, are we all guessing the Switch Lite survives? Yes. I think, although it hasn't sold as hot as the yeah. mainline Switch. But I uh, think it survives too. But I think it only, yeah. I really think it only survives if they kill the main model. Because if they don't, then they can make the current one like 250 and make this 300. They could, but I, I think it survives because they've, I think recently some of the numbers came out that like Animal Crossing drove a ton of sales and it drove a ton of sales of the Switch Lite specifically. Um, and that might be very game specific, but they're now lifetime sales of Switch, the Switch family including mm-hmm. Switch Lite, are where they're at because the Switch Lite is, is there and made sales where they, they may not have made them. So I don't know. I, I think... And this plus, like, the, the handheld-only console is such a Nintendo... It's Nintendo's bread and butter. I just can't see them... Yeah. I think that. especially when you consider, like, the, just the family recommendation. Like, if I were a parent, I would get my child the Lite. Like, I prefer the Lite to the main console, hands down. And... But... I respect the place, you know, of the the main console. And so I just feel like, yeah, to, I got to think the 2DS out of the gate probably didn't sell that well either, but they kept that thing running. They, I mean, they kept the 2DS, not even referring to the new Nintendo 2DS XL, just the straight Nintendo 2DS. They basically kept that thing running through the entire life cycle of that 3DS family because up until the end, it was still in like the odd Black Friday bundle. You're talking about the Wedge? Time. The Wedge one, yeah, the doorstop one. Yeah. Like, I still think that will, I think they keep it. It's the price so, re- 199 is yeah. like such a reasonable price to, to get into the Switch. And, that, and that's, and then again, that's the, that, that kind of just, you know, I think wraps a bow on my like perspective of, of what this experience is, is they're just trying to replicate their, their, in, in a new way, their 3DS approach, you know, their handheld yeah. approach. How do we do that? Like they were, they had, there was so, too many options for the 3DS at the end of its life. Um, and it's, those are still selling. My brother just, my older brother just bought a new 2DS XL so he could play. Does he not listen to another Nintendo podcast? He <laughs> knows what other things are out there. I mean, that said, I respect that. And I love no, he's that. excited. Oh, cool. He's borrowing my um, uh, uh, Link Between, or Link to the Past and Link Between, not Link to the Past, Link Between Worlds. And uh, all, he's, he just wants to replay all the Zeldas that he can't play on his Switch. And yeah, no, like, no, oh, no, for sure. Can't... The 3DS still has an amazing library, yeah. let alone all the DS games, so for sure. I support that. Thank you, Matt's brother, for doing your good work. Like and subscribe, show. Nick. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Build it beautiful. So, <laughs> should we... Should... Okay, next topic. Really... Release window. When do you guys Segway. think this thing is coming out? Ooh. Now, part of this report and this report to Bloomberg was that the the reason why Nintendo's games are kind of light, very light this fall, is they're saving some heavy hitters to launch alongside this thing. In March of 2021, it'll be four years, hard to believe, after the release of Breath of the Wild one. Yep. I would not be surprised to see this console come out. I think March is pretty soon because I do not think Nintendo is going to full scale announce this thing. Do you think this actually could get announced before the release of the next gen consoles? Is, like, before in Xbox hopes of maybe making people be like, oh, you know, I couldn't before pre-order they come PS5. Out, yeah. I'm going to sit on yeah. this and instead pre-order. If they were the aggressive Nintendo that I wanted them to be, yes. Yeah. I <laughs> like think the day yeah, before those right. consoles would come out, they dropped their like big mainline direct, launched a yeah. whole bunch of games. They're going to, out I mean, they're year. going to be big supply demands for well, the next gen consoles because of covid especially so i right. if it'd be smart to be like hey yeah you lo- you know, missed out on this opportunity then like why don't you put some money down on this and this is exciting also but i think danny that's a good point i think they won't do that i think because nintendo recently they like announced something and it's out like within three months so i think yep. it's more likely they announce this like in you know late january and then it comes out like in may I think spring 2021 is what I'm guessing. What do you guys think? I, I think it, I think it'll be probably spring, but I, I actually think it'll be Mar- March, whatever. I mean, does March count for spring in the, in Nintendo's fiscal year? Yeah. Um, we'll allow it. Um, I, I think they will announce it beforehand. Cause you remember when the switch 
was initially announced. Danny, you were there. We had like a little like announcement party over the like the TikTok, like the the ten like countdown was going, and they had all of Nintendo's like young creators out there. Do you remember that when they did that when they announced the Switch? I, I do. Like I remember not being. I remember you were still selling me on, dude, you have to get this thing. It's codenamed the NX. It's going to be totally cool. Mm-hmm. They're definitely going to remake uh, Star Fox Adventures for you on this thing. <laughs> they could. They still you made can. a deal with the devil claiming that, Matt. I, I know I did. But that being said, uh, you know, I was proven right. Um, and <laughs> Wait, wait, which part? By Switch being amazing. And the, and the, my point is... a tricky-centric is, spinoff coming to Switch holiday 2020. <laughs> <laughs> oh god and here's my money so <laughs> so but that that was announced and then you could pre-order it and then it came out that march right am i am i getting that wrong it was announced in yeah i think the event was in january uh, i think it was the beginning of 2020 there, oh, there okay. had been yeah so there had been so leaks for a while before that but the formal yeah. announcement was then yeah right so okay and if 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 that's the case then i can see them just doing that again and announcing a bunch of games after the holiday which they traditionally have done there's usually that like direct after yeah after the holiday um but also we're going on almost a year with no major nintendo direct and you know we we we, we got to know what's coming out this holiday like we have no idea we literally have pikmin Yeah, and that's it. That's all. And that's that's all we have. And, co- and then, you know, contrasting this to last year, you know, when you had a, just a slew of games, we were playing Zelda at this point. Yeah, you, you know, Astral Chain. You know, we just finished right. Fire Emblem. We got Luigi's Mansion. We got yeah. Pokemon. God, yeah. so it was embarrassment of riches. Yeah, so it's just Damon X Machina. Hello, oh. nerds. Oh. Oh. That's right. Oh. Oh. That's t- that was the fun. embarrassed riches. Mm-hmm. So, it, so I have it downloaded on my Switch. I will play it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. So I don't know. I, I think it'd be, yeah, like Danny said, it'd be awesome if they did announce it or if they were like, oh, and by the way, like, you know, the Mario, like, poking out of the, the, the red curtain, that tweet that they had out, and they were like, we're, we've got something to show you. And it was the uh, NX announcement, like, date. Um, you know, I want, I want some viral stuff like that. No more of this, mm-hmm. like, beautifully cgi Mario character on yeah, the beach. Yeah, get Mario like, off the beach. <laughs> Unless he's got something, to, something sunshine related to prove. He needs to go home and get to work. Yeah, seriously. So, uh, that's my yeah. take on that. Let's, okay, so talking about games and things coming out then, cool. let's talk about what we think is going to come out, uh, both for the, for the Switch Plus and also this fall. So, can we all agree Switch Plus timing will time to breath of the wild too do we think that yeah is possible yeah i feel both of them my thought is that it's probably gonna be announced in the spring but i think it's gonna launch late summer early fall and it'll tie up with both it'll be the device and okay so you think yeah zelda yeah yeah it's hard to believe we would get the switch plus within six months or get at least breath of the wild two within six months seems really unlikely yeah, yeah you think we'd see something if there's anything to show but although there was that French retailer that leaked something for a release date in December, I always do for Zelda two. <laughs> and they were also the same Bonjour, one we love who it. correctly uh, listed the Witcher. So there's that their credibility. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Interesting. Can we say this? Do you think cyberpunk confirmed <laughs> for smash? Do you, do you think that, <laughs> um, uh, cause originally right here first. Uh, breath of the wild was supposed to come out much sooner than the switch actually came out. Right. And then, mm-hmm. It was coming out on the Wii U, and then um, they confirmed it as coming out on Switch, and then bumped it again, and then it was just like, okay, it's a launch yeah. title for Switch. Do right. you think that they went into this sequel with the uh, idea that um, we're going to release this potentially with an upgraded version, or did you think they went into it like I think holiday I think holiday game? Cold, yeah, I think probably that, because... I don't anticipate that it's going to have anything that they would be like, oh, let's optimize it for this hardware, you know, which again makes me think it's more likely there's going to be things like maybe the slightly faster version of the processor um, and Digital Foundry just a lot of fun breakdowns of like the various, um, what is like the Logan and all the various like versions of this like T1 chip that have had um, uh, and what like, I don't want to mistake the names, but the you know, what like the newer version of that chip is, which already exists, you know, if Nintendo were to continue along the same 
uh, you know, processor front, utilizing the same basically mobile based Tegra chips uh, and just use the ones that are already uh, things that are out uh, to incorporate into the next hardware. Mm-hmm. So um, versus what they had chosen, which was, you know, a more a more cost effective option in 2017, which would not be the same thing as now, but it wouldn't be like a revolutionary change. I'm sure they're working with the same toolkit as the first Breath of the Wild to make Breath of the Wild 2. Mm. Um, so yeah, I do, if I had to guess, I'd say we get this thing, I'm going to guess just later spring. Um, and then I do think Breath of the Wild certainly next year. And maybe they both get shown off in a similar conference. Maybe there's a couple of months in between. I feel like they got it because think about how much we had seen already of Breath of the Wild prior to like finding out it was gotten yeah. de- getting delayed and then delayed again, you know, like, right. Um, so it's like, are we only going to see the one glimpse we got at E3? Was that last year? Um, yeah, and certainly not this year. Yeah. The, um, <laughs> yeah, it was last year and yeah, it's true because Breath of the Wild at, you know, back in 2016 had that E3 that was all dedicated to it from Nintendo standpoint. And it, there was that whole hour worth of like content or so like in game of explain had like the 24 hour video breakdown of like all the things they played, like the, so there was a lot of time. What I'm trying to say there is there was, you know, nine months ish between. So the I do think we'll probably see it. So maybe late summer, early fall. What do we like see? The time what do we see this winter then? What's 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 coming? Okay. Final topic. So I pulled up a link here, boys, and it I do need you if um if you are standing up, viewers at home, I need you to sit down. If you're in a car, I need you to pull it over. If you are laying down, I do need you to sit up. That's just the way this works. And be seated, because I'm going to read off the list of, of the upcoming Nintendo Switch games to look at for 2020, and uh, what you hear may disturb you. So this list I'm looking at, uh, I just pulled up from Pocket Lint, uh, not a website I've been to before, but they are doing us a great service right now. The first of which being Pikmin 3. Deluxe. That is the first thing they've listed as um, upcoming, and um, that's basically most going to be most of the list. Because the other things they have on this upcoming games list is Bravely Default Two comes out some point in 2020, but we do not know when. It cannot currently be pre-ordered. Doom Eternal, a game that came out in March on the other consoles, comes out in 2020. Um, I'm just scrolling through. No More Heroes Three is supposed to come out in 2020, which I would be very excited about, but we have not seen a lot on that front and those are truly all of the big games that have been gods and monsters that was a that was a big uh tease and then i mean not not nintendo first party but even then even so that's a game that's gone in the ether also yeah we don't know what's happened to that i know there's a lot going on we saw restructuring and harassment stuff uh yeah even the game i think is getting renamed uh so that game yeah there's a whole lot going on with that one yeah, now I'm looking at Metacritic site and scrolling through. I mean, there's really just so, so po- little. Pokemon Snap? But that's not going to come out in 2020. That's what I thought. Just looking at this article, I was like, <laughs> did, where does it say anywhere in the news that it never, says 2020? Never did. Never did. Uh, right. You know, there's... Yeah, that really game looks uh, pretty done, though. <laughs> like <laughs> It does, but so, it's not going to... Metroid Prime 4 we know that there's the 2020. Frozen Tundra is also something that is coming out. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, so now, it looks the, like Pikmin got... Three Deluxe does not come out till late October for Pikmin Three Deluxe. So October thirtieth. Yeah, you know, I do remember thinking like that's they like announced it with a while ago, but they did the same thing with um, Paper Mario. Um, and then it's like, why, you know, like yeah. especially for that game, it's like we know this is made. Game. It's gonna have DLC, but what are you sitting on, team? Like, so the big question I have. So if we're only saying the only confirmed thing we have is Pikmin 3 Deluxe and the only medium releases would be um, would be the presence of No More Heroes 3, which is going to be a specific audience and Bravely Default 2, which I'm not even confident is coming out this year because uh, we had that playable demo a few months ago, which is great fun, just like they did for Octopath Traveler, but it's been silent for release date in Square Enix. They just had that partner showcase last week where they were featured. Bravely Default did not make an appearance as far as any update. I feel like they would announce a date at this point. Yeah. Obviously, COVID's not helping any of these things. Um, but that said, so I'm going to say Bravely Default too. I'd be surprised if it came out this year. And we know Pokemon will have its DLC for the Frozen Tundra. So that's something. Um, and that'll be useful for them, but it's, it's unlikely to 
you know, get more than, I mean, that's the kind of thing that needs to come out, frankly, before the other consoles come out, because no one's going to be paying attention to Pokemon. Pokemon can grab this spotlight if it's the only thing. I know it'll hold it for a week. I think their winter lineup or their holiday lineup is going to be um, like either a port or a collection of ports. And that's either going to be Mario, <laughs> so it's basically the Mario a port, collection, Mario. yeah, or it's. So going, we have our long rumored collection that we've right. talked about previously on MP, and those three games were Matt, take it away. Were the three games we're going to make it in the Switch HD Mario collection? We had uh, Super Mario Sunshine. We had yep. uh, Super, uh, Super Mario Galaxy, but not Galaxy yes. Two, just, right? Just the first one. Yeah. And rumor. Yep. And, and the. Uh, uh, Super Mario and 3D 64. World, right? Or no, six, uh, 64. Oh, no, 64. And then that rumor was separately that 3D World would also get an issue remake. Okay. So, but, but okay, but consider this. So if we got Pikmin announced last month, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And it's not coming out until October. Then if we follow that same timeline for a 3D World, another Wii U game getting a deluxe version for the Switch, then that would put it in November if it got announced today, just based on that time. It did not get announced today. And so... Um, unless we, you know, really wait on posting this thing until it's that time, in which case uh, this is a hot reaction to them <laughs> announcing 3D World Deluxe. But um, I just feel like the window is getting so tight. It is getting so what tight. Is, and that's also what, you, so- what is even the motivation to put Pikmin, honestly, in that slot, if not to put it like squarely in the middle of like end of the year and when it was announced? You know, it's yeah. like it feels like I put it there so I can be like, if we release it late August and there's going to be still nothing, like at least we can say until August or October 30th that there's like something coming. Yeah. Like, there's still Pikmin. There's still Pikmin. Um, and, and don't forget like, like buying they've, they've, time. It's like that and like Animal Crossing updates, you know, like that's right, that's, which will be just free. Yeah. Updates. So, but in terms of just having some kind of, and I mean, the, the, you know, the, the announcements, the, the mini partner direct, and then the indie showcase, those are, those have been great, but uh, it's funny that you mentioned Mario 3d world, um, because did we confirm that in 2013, that was the Wii U's (laughs) release, uh, (laughs) that dropped during the Xbox one, uh ps4 mm-hmm. releases so how funny yeah, if so that game a- was again their <laughs> holiday release to combat the <laughs> their rival that's awesome so what we we're going series. to share is that if the ps5 and xbox one x coming out this or series x excuse me coming out this holiday season so with that in mind previously nintendo has like dropped some killer piece of software at the same time as their like hardware releases for competitors um you know to keep nintendo as an attractive option in december 2011 mario kart 7 came out for the 3ds um, right about the same time as PS Vita and really ended up eating the launch of the, the Vita. Um, and then in October 2013, there was Wind Waker HD and then also um, Super Mario. And so 3D World came out. Oh, and, Wii U, yeah. You know, did those detract from PS4, Xbox One sales? <laughs> Almost certainly they did not. But that was like, you know, Mario, of course, but that's the biggest deal Nintendo has. And that was the flagpole, you know, 3D Mario experience of the Wii U generation. So um you know you think they would do something like that again but they certainly are not going to put up something original um because there's just not seemingly time also this is a bigger question does nintendo care about putting anything out this holiday well, like is it you mentioned Nintendo's are, you mentioned this concept this like a uh and like a couple of episodes ago where you're like i just don't think that nintendo really needs to based on their sales and based on just the, the times right now like they're they're churning out money they're you know switches are are selling great and they probably i mean that's why i think they still need a game to they need they need a thing or two to still stay like relevant relevant Relevant. like yeah i would certainly like something i just wonder if they're looking at this and saying whatever we put out is going to get swallowed up by the bigger news this holiday so but, and we're but selling well. Will it though? Because there's not really going to be a ton of launch exclusives for the other games yeah. or for the other systems. Like there, yeah. Spider Man sure. is the biggest one, and, yeah. and I don't think it's going to be enough to completely overshadow every other system in their games. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Spidey will be definitely big, but it. Right. I think it feels like a, a spin off of the last great uh, Marvel Spider Man game on PS4. So you're yeah. right. There is not like a huge. And with thing Halo for... getting booted to next year too, it's uh, yeah. Know, I also, yeah. I don't know that Nintendo's ever been in the, this kind of a, a position where, like, 
I mean, maybe with 64, but there, I mean, this, the switch is, is, is a massive console. It's a massive success. And it's not just a massive success with casual gamers, but like people that own Xboxes and Playstations, like have come back to Nintendo. And so mm-hmm. even more so this time around, you've got a company that, you know, most people, I would say many, many like hardcore gamers who own one of the two consoles or both probably also have a Switch and are playing a lot of it right now. Um, yeah. And opting to play games portably if they can. And I don't know, I, I feel like Nintendo's more has the hearts and minds of the wider gamer community than it's ever had. And so I don't know right. why you want to and capitalize let's touch on, on a couple of those specific numbers from that Bloomberg report. Nintendo has sold 61 million Switch consoles between March 2017 and the end of June. And then there is um, a reference to the Wii was their biggest home console that had sold 102 million units in its lifetime. But the DS reached 154 million units. Um, and so that it says at least one analyst expects to refresh Switch model could boost sales. Of course, people like us are likely to buy that. Then we'll buy you know our second or perhaps third Switch. Um, and then there's a quote at the end. The Switch will surpass the Wii sales even without an upgrade, said Ace Research Institute analyst Hideki wow. Yashida. And a sound wow. hardware update plan would even allow the Switch to surpass the Nintendo DS handheld. So they're claiming that, you know, they really don't need anything. I just do wonder from Nintendo's standpoint, if they're like, you know what? But yeah, I agree. I mean, it, it behooves them to stay relevant. And you do wonder, you know, can you be lax like that when you're up top, at, you know, as the king and and or are they risking like Nintendo fans are so easy to please that a Mario you know ourselves included but like a Mario collection or something that came out we'd still get excited about it like we would all be talking about like revisiting Sunshine and like things we're nostalgic for in it and um, you know all of their ports whether they've handled it or uh, I think Blue Point handled the Twilight Princess uh, remaster like they were good ports you know um, especially Wind Waker and you wonder like that could be just like an easy win. People would talk about that for a while. It's still seen like with Pikmin. Okay. So Pikmin, we haven't really talked about it on the show. <laughs> Let's just talk about this as our final topic on, on this episode. Okay. Okay. I loved Pikmin three. Okay. Mm-hmm. I loved I played the lead the crap characters, out of the pink, pink girl, blue boy, and the, oh my God. the older, ma- older man. And, uh, but I love I loved the game. I collected every single thing. It was beautiful, you know, beautiful on the Wii U. I had picture this in your mind's eye, okay? It's it's Austin circa whenever that game came out, two thousand. I don't know. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, so I'm I'm home in my basement downstairs. We got a big CRT TV, beautiful resolution for this for this uh, Wii U game. Gamepad propped in front of me on some magazines. That's the map. Wiimote and nunchuck in the other hands using the combination of both control schemes and just digging into it. I'm tossing purple Pikmin. I believe they were in that <laughs> Pink game. Pink Pikmin. Yeah, they were in <laughs> that game. Rock Pikmin. Pink Pixie Pikmin. Like the, I love that game. I love collecting. The, I love just when they would squeeze the nectar out of like the, into the juice, you know, that would give you the day extensions. Yeah, you, nectar, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Oh, even just the render of that sweet, sweet fruity juice. I would, I would gladly slurp that down, but now I have to ask myself, given I've bought all the other Wii U ports, okay? Let's talk about all, all of them. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, okay? Did I need to buy that again? Absolutely not. <laughs> That's the game I continually re-download on the Switch, like, maybe it's a good time. Play it for a level and say, goodbye. <laughs> Delete it again. The um, Pockin, okay? Yep. DX, we got that again. Tropic Freeze, probably. The, uh, we got, what, what was that? Donkey Kong? Donkey Kong Tropical Tropical Freeze, Freeze, you know, double dipping on that one. Played all the way through it, so worth it, but yes. Um, (laughs) Tokyo Mirage Session, Sharp FE, you know I did that again. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, no-brainer, must-have on the Switch. Like, there are so, I'm sure there are other ones, and I want to stop this list, because it's causing me physical pain, thinking (laughs) of, you know. But, like, but Pikmin, and I love Pikmin. I do not intend to go and play that game again. I think this will be, Captain Toad bought that one too. I think this will be the first Switch Deluxe game that I'm just like, I'm going to pass on it. Especially like, yes, there are not big games coming out for the other consoles, but it is exciting like to even be like, okay, I don't play Assassin's Creed every year, but you know what? On PS5, I'm going to want to play it. Mm-hmm. Like that's going to be exciting. You know, it's going to get that little launch game bump of being like, you're looking like, oh, you know, there's ray tracing and that game doesn't have it. But 
Point being, like, there's everything's more exciting for that reason. So, I'm not gonna want to be playing. Did Pikmin, you play even it's a all terrific the DLC game. though for that game? No, and there's new DLC too. Get, so this is really good. But it's so expensive. I do remember Pear, sixty dollars for this. IGN used to t- talk about all the DLC for that game all the time and how much he loved it and yeah. playing with his, you know, his kids Daughter, and stuff. Yeah. I think, yeah. Um, yeah. I and I and if the new DLC, which I think has Olimar in, um. I think Olimar's in it. Olimar, Alf, Brittany. Yeah, because he was not in the original game. No. Like, um... It was weird. It was kind of like Jurassic Park. You know, they changed up the, like, mate. You're like, no, I want to bring him back. That's true. But then it's, like, kind of fun when they turn... You know, um, neither here nor there. But the... But, yeah, if that DLC is awesome. But, like, Xenoblade, that's a game I also bought twice. So, like, that was on the Wii. But, um, you know, it's just... It would have to be a sizable amount of DLC. People are like, you know what? This is really awesome. And I'd be like, oh... Screw them, I'll do it. But short of that, like, it's so expensive. Do we think Nintendo's really going to release a Mario collection for just 60 bucks of three, like, perfect games? I mean... Two perfect games and Sunshine? For, for, in, in my mind... Shame. I think you need to be... You got, I think you have to release something, in, 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 even if it's to support... I mean, look at... People are going nuts for... for uh, just like DLC for for Animal Crossing. Granted, it's a big game, but I think like people are still excited and talking about Pikmin Three. I mean, you see it all over. Yeah. Like you have this opportunity during a pandemic where video game sales are just through the roof. How could you not release something, right? Like, yeah, you want to capitalize. Like, on that. It, people have a little more stimulus money I mean, I mean i think now that we're getting further away from when that came out we have to ask ourselves so that's true be something but that but i think people especially back, as you're entering winter again and potentially more lo- i just think people are opting to spend their discretionary income regardless of stimulus check or not on entertainment and lately video yeah. games and lately nintendo so I, to me i just i mean look at their stock price right now it's insane it's Yep. It's it hasn't been that this high. Yeah, surge 70% from March. So, that was the number. So yeah, my my point being is I it, I think even if it's just support. You're saying you need to capitalize more, on the momentum, don't yeah, coast. But it, it. but even capitalizing could mean just as simple as like really support a port that's maybe Yeah, capitalize more, on it extremely lightly. <laughs> more exciting than <laughs> Pikmin 3. But like a sunshine or, you yeah. know, it's been because there's no way to play those games, so that's why it's a big right. Deal. Oh, 3D World is a great example of just like, come on, put that on Switch. So many people who didn't yeah. get a chance to play that on Wii U would would swallow that up. I don't know, Danny. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, no, I mean something needs to come out this fall. Something not just I don't know. Pikmin doesn't feel like it hits the nail on the head for me. It's definitely not a game. I just want to be honest. I know a lot of people love it, and kudos to y'all. Uh, it's not going to be one that I'm going to pick up. Boot him. Um, Boot him. Boot him. And yeah, though, the, the classic trilogy or whatever of all the 3D Mario games, um, I'm in. I will gladly replay Sunshine because I never actually beat it. I got really close and I just gave up. Mm-hmm. Um, I never played Galaxy, but I, I would probably play it if it was already grouped in with the other ones. And 64 Remastered, I would definitely take care of that baby penguin on that frozen place and not drop him off the edge yeah. i would play that game so thank you much. not all heroes wear capes but um this, yeah this young man i super cape would adore if nothing else just to play 64 again mm-hmm. um and just kiss that baby on the head and say it's gonna be okay yeah <laughs> that's austin's farewell before he says goodbye to the baby penguin <laughs> um, be all right buddy yeah so i just Good lord, I hope they drop or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I hope they drop something this year. Um I I also want to keep in mind that like just seeing how a lot of other publishers and developers are going as far as the pandemic is real as far as affecting the production of these things. So even if they want to desperately launch something, maybe they did have like three or four things that they were ready to go and who knows if all of them if any of them actually make it, you know. Um, Because Nintendo's historically, they don't like to crunch their employees. So maybe that's also something to keep in mind. Maybe they aren't able to launch something this year. So I don't know. So much is up in the up in the air right now. Let's all take a vote. Do we think we get some type of port that's not announced yet that comes out before the end of 2020? Aye. 
I'm down. I think we that. probably do. I, I agree. Also, you know what would be like a stupid win? This isn't even right. Like, it's wrong that Nintendo gets to skate by on this somewhat, but I would be excited. It would be not only the Mario Collection, not just 3D World, but if we got that Metroid Prime trilogy. There it is. There you know, it like, is. People would be like, oh, we didn't expect this. And it's like, dogs, this game's come out so many times. <laughs> but at the same, but also, we're, we're here for it. We love that. Yep. And I think it's possible. I think it would look great. It would look great on like, especially in handheld. To, to I mean, people, for sure. people would be pumped for that. Of course, yeah, that would yeah. be they're great games. I think the hype, Get the hype level going would be, would be maybe higher. then maybe four and you know Breath Breath of the Wild two come out next year yeah. around the same time. Yeah. But whatever, now we're running away with it. <laughs> Realistically, we're going to get Nintendogs plus cats you know plus gonna birds. going to carry them we'll all the way through the end of the year. Woof. World of Tanks Blitz. <laughs> yeah. Free to play on Switch. Download it now. Ask your parents before going online. Ooh, yeah, that's, that's, that's what's going to carry it. Puyo Puyo <laughs> was a great launch game, so I'm tempted. Um, anyways, oh, no, goodness. so it, it's a, it, you know, it's an exciting, frustrating time as a Nintendo fan. Mm-hmm. But there's, And in conclusion, Nintendo forever. Nintendo forever. (laughs) All right. Thank you so much for joining us on another Nintendo podcast. I've been Austin Cummings. This has been Matthew Schultz. Yep. (laughs) And this has also been Danny Tortelli. It's been me. (laughs) It has been he. Uh, Thank you all so much for listening. We'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Farewell. Farewell.